Let's go get locked in. Come on. Say, get my mind right. Say, get my mind right. Say, the mind's a muscle too. Get my mind right. Say, train the brain. The mind's a muscle too. Get my mind right. So when we broke, we, we asked you guys to come on over here. A, a large percentage of you guys went through the gate there. That, that, through that little, take a look over there. Is that a walkway? No. So I want you to think about this. Um, when we're looking for players at the next level, we're looking for players that separate themselves. And one, we've talked about it before, but there's the player and there's the person. And your dollar value is going to be in direct relationship to who you are as a person. Because there's a lot of really good players. So we're looking for quality people. We're not looking for guys that are looking for the shortcut. And why do you think most guys went that way? Because it's easier, right? I mean, com common sense. I'm going to go right through the, the area where no one's supposed to walk, move the um, netting, kind of weasel my way through because it's shorter. Well, that's taking a shortcut. So if you take shortcuts right there, you know where else you're going to take shortcuts? In life. In your life. In training. In everything you do. You're going to be a guy who takes shortcuts. Um, can you guys move over here, please? All the way just coming back here. Okay. I work for one of the 30 major league teams. And when we're looking for players, we're looking not only for great players and good athletes, we're looking for quality people, guys that don't take shortcuts. And that's the way you separate yourself. And that's going to translate into the clubhouse. Um, you think of a major league season, it's 180 games in 100, it's, excuse me, it's 162 games in 180 days, right? How many games? 162. How many days? 180. So think about the major league hitter. Okay? And if we look at Nolan Arenado or any of these great players, okay, if you take him and the other, the averages, if you, if you kind of average it out, but you even look at Nolan, how many times is he going to get up roughly in a season? If you guys look at, his, look at his stats or look at the average major league hitter who's a starter, they're going to get up between 600 and 700 times. That's in one season. I don't know if you guys have been up 700 times in your life. 700 times in one season, right? How many times do you think Nolan Arenado is going to get out this year? And, and he is arguably one of the best hitters in the game, in the world. How many times do you think he'll get out this year? 500. He's going to get out about 300 times. How many times do you think he's going to strike out? 100. Probably 100 plus, right? And he's going to be the best hitter in the country, okay? This is a tough game. And if you take shortcuts and if you're not a great teammate, let me just tell you something. When you're in that clubhouse, okay, for those 180 days with your team, okay, 162 games, you're traveling. If you're not in the clubhouse, you're traveling with your team. Well, about 50% to 75% of the time, you don't even feel good about yourself because you're not hitting well. Because you're getting out 300 times and striking out 100. So what happens is, is what kind of guy are you? Are you a great teammate? Do you cut corners? So that's when it comes into play. So right now, you are... Bryce Harper was, what, 1 for 17 in his last four or five games, right? So what kind of teammate is Bryce Harper when he's 1 for 17? That's the question, right? And how quick can he bounce back and get back to where he is? And we say, get your mind right. you got to get your mind right to be a great hitter. And one way you get your mind right is to clear your mind. Is to do what? The second is to be present. you got to be present i got to be on time. And if I'm thinking about my last at bat or my last at bat or my, excuse me, if I think about my last at bat where maybe I didn't get a hit because I wanted to or my last two at bats, what happens is I'm in the past. I'm not in the present. So to get my mind right, I have to be present. I have to be here right now. So right now you're in the game and you are 0 for 2. You popped up and you struck out with the bases loaded. And now it's your third at bat. A great hitter gets his mind right and he's present. He's not concerned about his last at bats. And he clears his mind, he relaxes, he doesn't put pressure on himself, and he attacks on that pitch. What does he do on that pitch? He attacks. But how can you do that if you're thinking about the past? If you take all the big league hitters and you add up their strikeouts for one year, you guys have any idea how many it is on average? 30,000. Okay, 30,000. Exactly. Okay. Nice guess. Okay. If you take up all the at-bats, you take up all the at-bats of all the major league hitters, how many times do you think they get out on average? It's about 135,000 times Major League hitters get out in a season. How many times? It's crazy, right? So it's difficult to get your mind right, to be clear, to be relaxed, to be attacked on every pitch and be present, be locked in. Okay? Now, if we're not on time as the hitter, if you're one-tenth to two-tenths of a second late, you're late. You can't hit. That's another major reason why we have to be 
present. Because if you're one to two tenths of a second late, think about this. I want you guys to say this. Read, read recognize, recognize, and react. react. Say it again. Read, read recognize. React. Let's do it. Let's do it in cadence. Read, read recognize, react. and react. react. So you have to do that in about three tenths of a second. Just took a pitch off. Come on, you just got one good pitch to hit that of bat, and it's in the catcher's mitt right now. Okay, you're not only behind the count, but you're not going to get another good one. It throws you two changeups in a row. And you swing and miss on both of them, and you go sit down. Don't take pitches off. Okay? The challenge is not necessarily to have the greatest swing, because the best guy is not always the guy with the best swing. Okay? It's the guy whose mind is right, he's locked in, he's clear-headed, he's present, he's relaxed, he's attacking. Stay with me. Stay locked in. Stay with me. So timing is huge as a hitter. Take a look. I got slow. I got medium. I got fast. There's a big difference, right? The swing is overrated, I want to tell you. Way overrated. The guy with the best swing typically is not the best hitter. There is a difference between a hitter and a hacker. The guy who hacks is just up there without a plan. His sense of timing is just okay. And he just tries to hit the ball hard. And that's about 90% of the hitters. And when they take BP, what do you think they try to do? They want to see how far they can hit it. And they measure success in their BP by how hard and far they hit the ball. Look at how far that one went. See that one? And then you're like, now I'm going to hit it farther. Okay? You know what kind of hitter you are in the game when you think with that plan? You're the easiest guy to get out. And that guy's a hacker. Who is he? A hacker. Okay? A hitter has an unbelievable sense of timing. His timing is unreal. What are the toughest pitchers to face? Fast, medium, or slow? Slow. 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 Toughest, right? Why are they tough? You gotta wait longer, but you really don't if you load later. See, if I load later, right when I load, the ball will be right where I wanna hit it. But if I load the same time on the medium pitcher as the slow pitcher, right when it's coming out of his hand, what happens? I gotta do what? What'd you say? I have to wait longer. Is it easy to wait? No. No, you start to leak, hands start to come forward, you start going into your front side, everything gives, and then you end up hooking it, popping up, rolling over. Swing and bunts, weak contact, Slow pitcher. Now the fast guy, why is he hard? You got less time to react, right? Here he is. Okay, it's pretty good. Okay. This guy's really fast. He's throwing 97. This guy's throwing 72. You guys are on time. It's beautiful. You're locked in, you're on time. Okay, why is the fast guy tough? But if you load early, it almost starts to equal out. A lot of times we load about the same time, then we try to rush our swing. So now I'm changing my swing. Just load early. Just get it down early. And expect it to be where you want it. We call that recognition. What do we call it? Recognition. Okay, recognition. Great hitters have great pitch recognition. They can recognize, say with me, spin, spin shape, shape, speed, speed location, location, within like one-tenth of a second. They can see it all. And you can only do that when your mind is clear. When your mind's what? So your mind has to be empty and clear, and you have to have a game plan. So today what we're going to work on is timing, game plan, recognition. It all begins with timing. So now we've got to be on time, know who's on the mound. We've got to categorize them, fast, medium, or slow. What's the categorize? Fast, medium, or slow. So it's fast, medium, or slow. And then we've got to set our timing. Then when we get in the box, we need to be on time. So we get on time by doing our homework and preparing. And then we also have to prepare outside of practice, and not at the game. And we're going to do a three-plate drill. It's awesome. You're going to be going back and forth to all three plates, working on your three timings, fast, medium, slow. Then we're going to go to cage number three, and we're going to work on cage number three. We're going to work on game plan. We're going to work on what? Game plan. Game plan. The best hitters in the game have a simple game plan. We're going to talk about game plan when we get over there. Okay? Get our minds right. Get on time. Get our game plan set. And then we're going to get pitch recognition. Where we clear our mind and we trust our what? Eyes. Trust our what? Eyes. Yeah, we trust them. Okay? And when you're in your eyes, what happens is you become a visual hitter. And when you're visual, your brain and your mind gets blank. It's pretty awesome. When you start seeing something really well, you don't think anymore. So your read recognition and react phase is going to get real quick and real good. You're going to see well, you're going to recognize well, and you're going to react real well. And you go, man, I'm hitting great. You're going to be in the zone. You're going to be where? You're going to be in the zone. And you get in the zone when you clear your mind and you have a simple plan. And everything just starts working. 
Swing is overrated. What's overrated? Swing. Now you do need to find your swing. So we're going to work on our swing. We're going to go through 10 simple steps. 10 simple steps. We're going to go through them. We're going to find our swing. It all begins with finding your swing, right? You get to the park, you've got to find your swing. But let me just tell you something. A lot of times your swing doesn't feel great. And we still need you to have quality of bats. So if you get caught up, man, my swing doesn't feel good. You know what happens? You lose confidence. You're not present because you're thinking about your swing. So nothing works. You can't get into the zone. You have poor pitch recognition because you're thinking about your swing. You got to clear your mind. You got to do what? Clear your, clear your mind and be present and be on time. Present and on time. Locked in. Come on. The guy quick pitched you. Be on time. Locked in. He's ready to hit. Yeah. He's ready to get after it. Yeah. Okay, what's overrated? Swing. Swing. Okay. The hitter versus the hacker. Okay. Most guys are hackers. So you want to take pride in becoming a hitter. Becoming a what? A hitter. Okay, and the big difference between a hitter is he has timing, game plan, great pitch recognition. And that needs to be practiced, not just going and hitting the tee and hitting soft toss and seeing how far you can hit in BP. Because if you just do that routine, you're going to be like every other hitter, and you're not going to be very good. You're going to be a hacker. And you're going to be an easy out. When we put the good guy on the mound, we call those guys dudes. When we put the dude on the mound, you know what happens? You're out. You're lucky to go one for four that game. And that's very typical. But when you become a hitter, you're on time. You have a simple game plan. You're seeing the ball well. You know what happens? You start going two for four off that guy. Start finding ways to get hits. Separate yourself. Here we go. Ready? Ready?